Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. Last video, I have completed four problems. Four problems on capital gain. In this video, fifth, sixth and seventh. Three more problems I'm going to explain. So comparatively, this computing the income from capital gain is very much easier compared to all other heads. So in this, the only thing you have to remember is, first of all, is it a short term capital gain or long term capital gain? because the basis of tax are different for long term and the short term. For that purpose, how we can identify if the land building or both are held up to two years and then sold, it is a short term capital gain. If the period of holding is more than two years, it is long term capital gain. For other assets, for other capital assets, the period of holding is three years. If it is sold below three, before three years, it is a short term. After three years, it's a long term. But for financial assets like shares, bonds, debenture, the period of holding is one year. All these things I have already explained in detail in the theory video. So I suggest you first, you watch the complete theory videos, be perfect about the provisions, then you don't encounter any problems while solving this. Now. Before starting the fifth problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Always keep it ready. Take the screenshot of the point, then I'll explain every point in detail. Now, see the fifth problem. Sri Harsha is owning a house and used for residential purpose. Remember, house is a capital asset. The house which was constructed for 1,80,000 40 years ago. On 11th July 1995, he entered into an agreement. 40 years means before 1,4,2001. So we can take the actual cost for FMB, whichever is higher. It was purchased, constructed for 1,80,000. On 11th July 1995, he entered into an agreement to sell the house to Mr. Abraham for 8 lakh and received 80,000 as advance. Mr. Abraham failed to pay the balance amount and consequently the advance money is forfeited. The advance money forfeited again in the last video also I have explained the provision of Income Tax Act. If the advance money is forfeited before 1,4,2014, 1st April 2014, before that, it, if it was received and forfeited, the forfeited amount will be deducted from the cost of acquisition. If the amount is forfeited after 1-4-2014, the amount forfeited is taxable under income from other sources. But here it was forfeited in 1995, that means before 1-4-2014. So this advance will be deducted from cost of acquisition. So 80,000 we are going to deduct. The house is sold during the previous year for 90 lakh and selling expenses were 1%. So consideration received is 90 lakh. So you can see here Sri Harsha, computation of LTCG. Consideration received 90 lakh. Transfer expenses 1%. 1% 1 of 90 lakh is 90,000. So net consideration 89 lakh. 10,000. Now, uh, FMB on 1-4-2001 was 15 lakh and the stamp duty value was 14 lakh. Whenever stamp duty value is given, <clears throat> the cost of acquisition will be taken to the lawyer of the two. FMB on 1-4-2001 or stamp duty value. So FMB is 15 lakh and stamp duty value is 14 lakh. The so least of these two is 14 lakh. So we will take 14 lakh as the cost of acquisition. From 14 lakh, we deduct the forfeited amount. Forfeited amount is 80,000. Now, during the previous year, 2002-2003, one more floor is added to the building at a cost of 6 lakh 30,000. Cost inflation index 105. That means there is improvement. So indexed cost of improvement also we have to deduct. Then and during 2008-2009, 3 lakh rupees is spent for renovation and painting. Cost Inflation Index 137. Income Tax Act has given the provision. Improvement means adding one more rooms or one more floor like that. That is improvement. 
but simply renovating the house repairing the house or painting the house is not called improvement it is just maintenance so this amount incurred on renovating and painting should be ignored it should not be considered as improvement so in working note in working note you should write a note that amount spent on renovation or painting that will not be considered as improvement it should not be taken as indexed cost of improvement then calculate the income from capital gain and the tax liability if income from other heads is 1 lakh apart from this capital gain he is having income from other heads of 1 lakh and we have to calculate the tax liability so net consideration just now i told you 89 lakh 10000 from this we deduct cost indexed cost of acquisition and indexed cost of improvement first indexed cost of acquisition the lower of the two 15 lakh is fmb and a standard uh, sorry stamp duty value is 14 lakh the house was constructed 40 years back that means before 1 for 2001 so we have to consider fmb not the actual cost now here uh, here you can see where i have written hmm, here the cost of acquisition is least of the following two amounts FMB on 1 for 2001 15 lakh or stamp duty value is 14 lakh whichever is less so 14 lakh is the cost from that cost of acquisition 14 lakh minus 80,000 80,000 is the advance money forfeited before 1 for 2014 that will be deducted. here I have written advance money received and forfeited 80,000 before 1 for 2014 so it will be deducted from cost of acquisition actually I'm fasting so I cannot be able to I mean clearly say the words please forgive and uh, 14 lakh minus 80,000 uh, 13 lakh 20,000 is the indexed cost of acquisition so into 331 divided by 100 current previous year index is 331 and the index of the purchase year or 1 for 2001 is 100 so 43 lakh 69 200 is the indexed cost of acquisition now indexed cost of improvement he has added one more floor uh, in 2002 2003 for 6 lakh 30 thousand this is the amount spent on adding one more floor improvement so indexed cost of improvement 6 lakh 30 thousand into 331 divided by 105 it is given index number 105 at the time of adding one more floor so 19 lakh 86 thousand is the indexed cost of improvement bracket denotes subtraction minus so 89 lakh 10,000 minus 43 69 200 minus 19 lakh 86 thousand LTCG 25 lakh 54 thousand 800 we have computed LTCG now it is asking you to calculate the tax liability so separately we have to calculate the tax for normal income and tax for LTCG LTCG is taxed at a flat rate of 20% whereas other incomes are taxed on slab system but here the basic exemption limit is 250,000 for a resident and non-senior citizen if a person is a resident in India and non-senior citizen the basic exemption limit is 250,000 but here the income is only 1 lakh so income tax provision says there is a deficiency of 1 lakh 50,000 2 lakh 50,000 is the basic exemption limit out of which 1 lakh is the income under other heads given in the problem so 2 lakh 50 minus 1 lakh 1 lakh 50,000 is the deficiency in basic exemption that 1 lakh 50,000 deficiency in basic exemption can be adjusted from LTCG that is the provision given by income tax act right huh? if the other income is more than 2 lakh 50 thousand we have to calculate separately tax on other income and tax on LTC but here the other income is below the basic exemption limit in that case deficiency we calculate and that deficiency will be deducted from LTC so here SSC status is resident non-senior citizen person if the income from other heads normal income is less than basic exemption limit of 250000 the deficiency of 150 can be adjusted so ltcg 255400 minus deficiency in normal income 150 
So taxable LTCG is 24,4800. This is called the taxable LTCG. And on this taxable LTCG, tax at the rate of 20% will be charged. So 20% on 24,4800, 4,80,960. This is the tax on which compulsory health and education says at the rate of 4%. So 4% on this amount 19,238 total 5,198 but income tax taxes. The income tax should be rounded off to the nearest 10 whether we take uh, 190 or 200 we should not take 198. The last digit is 8 so we include 2 more rupees to make it 200. So 59,200 is the tax liability tax due. That's all. So this is the end of Fifth problem. Now I am coming to <clears throat> problem number six. Srimati Chinnamma constructed a building of for rupees five lakh in the financial year eighty five eighty six, and rupees five lakh is spent for adding one more floor in August two thousand one. So actually, house was constructed in eighty five eighty six before one four two thousand one, and uh, she spent five lakh rupees on adding one more floor in August two thousand one. She sold the building for 55 lakh. Consideration received 55 lakh. During the previous year, stamp duty was 63 lakh. Actually, she, she sold it for 55 lakh. But actually, the stamp duty at the time of sale was 63 lakh. So, income tax act says whichever is higher should be taken, whether stamp duty value or sale proceed. Here, stamp duty value, first time it is given stamp duty value of sale. So uh, 63 lakh rupees we should take as consideration. Then selling expenses 64,000. Cost inflation index for 2001-2002 is 100. And FMB on 1 for 2001 is 15 lakh. So whenever an asset is purchased before 1 for 2001, we should take the higher of the two. Actual cost or FMB. Here actual cost was 5 lakh. But FMB was 15 lakh. Right? So whichever is higher we should take. And stamp duty value is 16 lakh. So whenever stamp duty value is given, we take the lower stamp duty value or FMB. Whichever is less, we should take as the cost of acquisition. So here we should take 15 lakh is lower. That is the cost of acquisition. Calculate income from capital gain and tax liability. If income from other heads are 7 lakh 90 thousand, it is more than 250, 2 lakh 50 thousand. So separately we have to calculate tax on normal income and tax on LTCG. First we calculate LTCG. Consideration received 63 lakh. 63 lakh is the stamp duty value, not the actual sale proceed. Because stamp duty value is more. Less uh, transfer expenses 64,000 given in the problem. Net consideration 60 to 36. From this indexed cost of acquisition and indexed cost of improvement. First, we take indexed cost of acquisition. Here, the FMB value is 15 lakh, whereas stamp duty value is 16 lakh, whichever is lower. 15 lakh is lower. So, 15 lakh into 331 by 100. 331 is the current previous year index. Right? Divide by 100. Whenever an asset is purchased before 1 for 2001, index number should be taken as 100 for the year of purchase. So, 49 lakh 65,000. That is the indexed cost of acquisition. Now, indexed cost of improvement. He has made improvement of rupees 5 lakh in 1st August 2001. So, here 331 divided by 100 because for 2001 2002 the index number was 100. 16 lakh 55. Now, this is the indexed cost of acquisition. This is indexed cost of improvement. Both should be subtracted from net consideration. 62 lakh 36,000 minus 49,65 minus 16,55, 3 lakh 84,000 negative you are have, we are getting. Negative means loss. First time we are coming across where there is capital loss, not capital gain. 3 lakh 84,000 minus 3 lakh 84,000 loss, long term capital loss. It is asking you to calculate tax liability. We don't have any tax on long term. Because there is a long term capital loss. If there is a long term capital gain, then tax will be there for 20%. Here there is no tax. Now, income from other heads are 7,90,000. This is the normal income. 
we apply slab system. So slab income rate tax up to 2,50,000 first slab nil. Up to 2,50,000 income is 2,50,000 nil. No rate of tax, no tax. Second slab goes from 2,50,001 to 5 lakh. From 2,50,001 to 5 lakh. The income will be 2,50,000. The rate of tax 5%. It comes to 12,500. Now next slab goes from 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakh. But our income is not going up to 10 lakh. Our income is only 7 lakh 90,000. That's why we will take the balance. The total income 7 lakh 90,000 minus 2 lakh 50,000 minus 2 lakh 50,000. Balancing figure is 2 lakh 90,000. On this balance of 2 lakh 90,000, 20% is the rate of tax. 20%, 58,000. Now total tax is 70,500. So tax liability is 70,500. To this, as usual, we have to add 4% health and education cess. So 4% 2820. 73,320. This is the tax liability. Now remember one point in examination, you should write the note that capital loss cannot be set off from other incomes. The capital loss can be set off only from capital gain. So if it cannot be set off, it should be carried forward to the next year. If in the next year, again, long term capital gain is there, then from that long term capital gain, this long term capital loss can be set off. But this long term capital, sell, uh, capital loss cannot be set off from other incomes. That is a point you should remember and you should note down. And already I told you in every video, I'm telling you whenever you watch the video, always maintain running notes, maintain a notebook, pen, calculator ready. Whenever I say something important, immediately note it down. Now, seventh problem. Problem number seven. Mr. Akram, age 82 years, senior, super senior citizen. Purchase gold ornaments. Gold ornament is a capital asset. On 10th March 1998, that means before 2001, for rupees 7 lakh. This is the actual cost. He took a loan by mortgaging ornament for rupees 5 lakh in interest due up to the date of sale is 92,000. And the same is sold during the previous year for 30 lakh. We are not concerned whether he has mortgaging the gold and taking the loan and paying the interest. There is no concern regarding this taking of loan, right? And uh, he sold the same for this 30 lakh consideration receipt. Selling expenses 4,000 due but not paid. Income tax taxes, transfer expenses or selling expenses will be allowed as reduction only if it is paid. If it is not paid, if it is due, not allowed as reduction. In working note, you should write down this point. Selling expenses due but not paid, so not allowed as reduction. Calculate capital gain for the current assessment year, cost inflation index for 22 23. Current previous year is 331. Even if it is not given, we must know it. Mr. Kern, computation of LTCG consideration received 30 lakh. It is given. Transfer expenses nil because selling expenses is due but not paid, not allowed. Net consideration 30 lakh. Indexed cost of acquisition. He has purchased the gold before 1 for 2001. That means in 1998 he has purchased. So whenever an asset is purchased before 1 for 2001, we should take either the actual cost or FMB. But in this problem, fair market value is not given in the problem. So we take the actual cost. Actual cost 7 lakh into 331 divided by 100. Any asset purchased before 1 for 2001. The index number of the purchase year should be taken as 100. So it comes to 23 lakh 17,000. Deduct 30 lakh minus 23 17, 6 lakh 83,000 is the long term capital gain. The so loan taken by mortgaging the house and interest paid on loan will not be considered for calculating income from capital gain. That point you have to write in examination. So, so far I have completed seven problems on capital gain. So if you're watching continuously, hope you got a good command, you got confidence in solving the problem of capital gain. Inshallah, we will continue the next problem in the next video.